This past weekend, I went to Disneyland with my family. A nice break and some reprieve from the storm that is brewing back home. There is nothing quite like seeing the park through the eyes of my niece and nephews and slipping away to a place full of laughter and momentary shots of adrenaline from the loops and twists of the rides instead of the loops and twists of my own life. Sometimes though, I feel like my own life is like an amusement park, mostly the merry-go-round. I look around and see everyone else living their lives in forward motion and I just keep going around and around and around in circles, never able to catch up. That is what it feels like living with chronic health issues. I feel like I'm stuck just going around and around. It often feels like my life gains a little bit of momentum, but then a few months later, I'm sideswiped by something new. And although they tend to never amount to much, what I wish people knew was the emotional and mental energy it takes to get through these moments are utterly exhausting. I look like death this morning. My eyes are so puffy. I am going in for a sigmoidoscopy tonight or today tonight a flex sigmoidoscopy and i have a cold i woke up with a cold i felt it coming on last night so i took nyquil and i'm really hoping that i didn't just screw that up and that i can still get this procedure because i get sedated um so crossing my fingers but i can't eat anything or drink anything after seven so i'm having my coffee and I'm racing the clock to drink it. I just got back from Disneyland. Now it's back to the real world and diving into figuring out what is going on with me and my health. I was having stomach issues uh, while we were there. A lot of pain. I had to take Excedrin every day because uh, it just feels like so much pressure. It's like something is sitting on top of my bladder. Well, something is sitting on top of my bladder. I don't know how to explain it. It's just like this tremendous amount of pressure. I can like feel something in my pelvis area. So this morning I have to do prep for the sigmoidoscopy. My mom's taking me. So I'll let you know what they find. <laughs> Alright, so they didn't find anything in my sigmoidoscopy, which is great. As you can see, I am a hot mess right now. I am breezing. So the next step is my results will be sent to my other doctor. Go from there. So I'm assuming surgery is next, but I have no idea. I'm going to rest for a little while and then I'm going to go out and work and do whatever I can that doesn't involve using power tools. So paint. All right, so to wrap this whole video up, they didn't find anything in my last test, my sigmoidoscopy. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. 
which is a good thing. And now I'm just waiting to hear from my doctor who is a gynecological oncologist to see what is next, which I'm assuming is surgery. We're gonna go from there. I have a lot of things that I'm working around and work and I just was not prepared for this whatsoever. So I am pretty stressed out trying to get all my ducks in a row before I go under the knife. And I think the most stressful part about that is the fact that they're gonna start off laparoscopically, but they might have to open me all the way up. And that is really unnerving to sit with, going into something like major surgery, not knowing what you're gonna wake up to. I know the pain of having my abdomen cut open from pelvic bone to belly button, and it's not fun. I will just put it that way. It is horrible. Even though I know they've come a long way in pain management, I still have a lot of trauma around my first experience with having abdominal surgery when I had part of my colon removed when I was 24. I'm pretty nervous about that. I think I've just been feeling really discombobulated. I left to go to Disneyland and we were still having 80 degree days. Now I'm back and it's like torrential downpour and my brain cannot catch up with what is going on and how it was still summer pretty much and now it's like pitch black at almost 7.15. I was in the shower the other day and I was just thinking about this whole process and I was thinking about how every time something like this happens, I have just reached a really good place in my business, gain momentum, and then it's like I'm just sideswiped by some medical something. And mentally it's just really exhausting to stay forward thinking. Mostly I just feel like my life is at a constant standstill and I know a lot of that is just on me and my ability to cope with these things and I think that I probably need to go back to therapy because I definitely have a lot of post-traumatic stress around my health that is probably unresolved so I'm gonna look into getting a new therapist exploring better ways to cope with all of this. I think it's just really hard because this is my busy time of year. This is where I make a significant amount of my money. Last year, I had 13 markets in six weeks from now until the holidays or Christmas. I am tentatively slated for two now, which is, I mean, a big, huge financial drop. And not to mention all the different things that come from doing markets. I just get out there more. I get commission work. I get more followers on social media. I talk to more people. I feel like I'm having to reinvent myself again and that is, it's just really stressful. I feel like I can't think of any other word other than stressful. And it's scary. I'm feeling a little bit lost right now and I just want to feel like I have a little bit of direction in my life. Know which way to go but I feel like I'm at a standstill because I'm about to have surgery and I don't know how long it's gonna take for me to recover. This is where I'm at. And I kind of just have to surrender into this place to kind of allow myself the grace to be in this space and heal and just take one thing at a time. I am fortunate that I have an incredible family. I think the biggest thing is I just want the mass out. I want to know if it's cancer. I want to know what my next steps are and I have no patience and I have to really practice leaning into patience and I suck at it. Not good at going with the flow. I like to have everything laid out. I like to know what I have in store for me and that is something that you just don't always get when it involves your health. I'm also just really wanting to dive into some of my home projects that I've been wanting to do since moving in here. What I'm gonna plan on doing is, is some of the easier ones with recovery. Like I have a couple closets that I want to redo and add more storage and shelves, maybe some paint and wallpaper. I will probably tackle those when I am just recovering. I'm just gonna take it day by day. I 
Um, appreciate you being here if you're watching these. I'm still trying to find my footing and my comfort level in being on YouTube and I think that it's important not only for my own healing process but to help other people but it still feels really awkward. I'm figuring out my area on this massive platform. If you like what I have to share, I would love if you would follow me and subscribe to my channel and give this a thumbs up. It just helps my videos get out there more and to the people that want and need to see them. I will be back hopefully next week with a new video and an update. Yeah, I'll see you later.